Well, you can't have anything related to the assassination of uh, John F. Kennedy without dealing with the grassy knoll. And that is why I'm going to give a very thorough tour of it. Been there many times. Of course, I live in Dallas. And you're going to see it from a lot of different angles with video. This is the same time of year and same time of day. So shadows should be about the same. Obviously, the trees have changed. But they still give a great indication of the obfuscation. You know, how much is in shadow? How well could somebody be hidden if they were there? That kind of thing. Looking up at the, uh, the infamous window from the middle lane that the presidential limo was in, from that same lane, looking straight forward. I'm actually standing on the spot with, with the X, for those of you who know what that is, and then looking a little bit further back across. Speaking of the X, where supposedly the fatal headshot occurred, uh, this guy's nicely standing on it for us, so great sense of perspective there, as you can see the depository. Now, back to the grassy knoll. I think it's fair to say that somebody you know, leaning over that fence with a gun would not be invisible. You know, it's not like there's a black backdrop or a, a dark building or something like that behind that space. But now let's uh, back up here so you can see the grassy knoll, from kind of back to front, right? And from here, it's completely obfuscated. Um, the trees do a great job there. Remember, there are two grassy knolls and two plazas. And for those who think a shot came from that spot right there that I'm looking at, you can see that it's well hidden and uh, completely out of the center of attention, right? The car would have been there on the left. And now I'm on the street, catching up here, on the street and just working my way right to left, so down the road and getting closer and closer to the grassy knolls. You can just see several shots, kind of a, you know, flip page style. And once you get past the pavilion or whatever you want to call it, then you get into there. And now you can see a much better case for someone being hidden in shadow, right? So angle is very important. Now, a little bit further back, but again, kind of the direction the car was traveling in, the way most people would be watching, the people who are on the other side of the street, that's about how it would have appeared. If you're wondering why this guy is taking a picture of that stone plinth, uh, it's because that's where Abraham Zapruder was standing when he took the Zapruder film. Basically, the only person to ever film a presidential assassination uh, stood right there, and I'm going to give you a bird's eye view of what it was like for him from that spot. Of course, you have we have his video as well, but in color, well, vibrant color, you know, nice and clear. And, uh, yep, this was it. Over half a century later, and it feels a little creepy to do that. It's amazing. Well, I don't have to tell you where I am now, right behind the picket fence, and we'll explore back here quite a bit. It's a wide area, and one of the things you're going to see is, uh, depending on your position, the feasibility of somebody being able to take a shot at a car on the street uh, changes radically. So let's just take a walk. The fence has been replaced, in case you're wondering. It's definitely not the original. I don't know how long the original stood up, but uh, like in the 90s, it looked pretty old and had a ton of graffiti on it. So you can see they've added a chain link fence to try to mitigate that, but uh, it, was, it was almost like a time warp looking at it. It was kind of interesting. You can see for yourself that the trees really change things, right, in terms of kind of opportunity and angles. So you can see the distances for yourself, cars, people. You can also see how long the fence goes. And if I turn around, actually I walked back and then turned around, kind of in the middle of the parking lot. There's the uh, Lee Bowers Railroad Tower, and there's the depository, the pavilions, the pruder was on the other side of that, and then the actual fence. And you can see how the shade covers it. It's a big parking lot for what you assume is going to be kind of a small space if you're on the other side, you know, looking up the grassy knoll. So just giving you an idea of the lighting here. So it looks really dark when you're far away, but when you get closer, it's, I mean... You wouldn't exactly blend in. So, you know, there's people that rushed, especially a police officer, uh, but then others who rushed to this spot. Now there was a certain amount of time before that passed, but again, just give you an idea. And here's kind of maybe one of the most secluded spots. This also gives a good idea how the cars can obscure a line of sight, because the day I was there, it happened to be pretty empty. So, just for the real insiders, here's the, uh, the storm drain that plays into some conspiracy theories, and there it is from a little bit further back, and you can see where I am in relation to the pavilion way up. And there's looking towards the triple underpass from that same spot. So now back to video, and obviously I'm on the end of the bridge, the grassy knoll side. See? Gives you an indication of how long it would have taken to get behind the fence from that direction. So now just some different views. If you look on the left there, you can see that I'm right up against the fence. And that was from pretty far back, so now I'm much closer to the to the depository. I'm walking in that direction, and uh, you know the the view and the proximity are much better from here. 
now I'm even closer, and you can tell that not just because of the trees, but if you look over to the left, you'll see the corner of the fence. So I'm really getting up to the very, very front. And if I make my way all the way to the front and look back, here's the ground we've just covered. And there used to be a railroad tie down on the ground, and the legend was always that, you know, the shooter stood on it to get a view over the fence, or just to get a better position, because the fence is not very high, as you can see, and now we're looking back in the other direction. Now I was going to take some video, so working my way all the way back up to the front, so this is from the very corner of the wooden fence, just in case you want to see from there. So you can see the cement over on my left, so this is as close as you can get. And now I'm just going to take a walk, starting from the beginning, so the depository is to my back, and I'm mostly going to shut up and just let the uh, space speak for itself. And there you are. I think that's a pretty thorough overview and tour of the Grassy Knoll. Thanks.